This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Don't look so surprised, Mona. Sure you've seen me with a pistol in my hand before. Harry, why are you pointing it at me? Sort of rough idea. You wouldn't dare kill me. No? I think it's different. I've planned this for a long time, and my plans have worked out perfectly. Your plans? You know why I telephoned you to meet me at the mountain line? You know how much of the station has thrown you to see this view? Not to kill me, Harry. I, I know you're joking. But I'm not joking. Your being here like this is a sin. I'm very clever. Worked out a way to kill you and never be caught. If you kill me, Harry, you go to the electric school. I'll go to trial. But I'll be acquitted. Just get out of your mind. I can't talk to you much longer, my darling. I'm away from the lodge too long. My alibi might not be as good as I want it to be. Harry, Harry, you can't kill me. You have no reason. I have all the reason in the world. I'll be rich when you die. Alone and important business concern. I'll, I'll give you my money. I'll sign my business over to you. Don't have it. Don't kill me. You can have everything you want. <laughs> I've got everything I want. Now. <laughs> and now meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Order! Order in the court! You may proceed, Mr. Holloway. Thank you, Your Honor. To continue, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. In judging Harry Benson, as you will and must, I ask only that you keep in mind this fact. And you will be forced to free Harry Benson from this hideous charge. Police have established that Mrs. Benson died in the city. Died from a bullet in her heart. You will remember the weapon was still in her hand when she was found in her apartment around noon on a Tuesday. That Tuesday as on the Sunday and Monday before and the day following, according to the testimony of four reputable witnesses, Harry Benson was at Mountain Lodge, 330 miles from the scene of his wife's death. <laughs> if there's another such disturbance, I shall order this courtroom to be cleared. Proceed, Mr. Holloway. Thank you, Your Honor. To continue, ladies and gentlemen of the jury... Mrs. Benson had reason to take her own life. You have seen evidence in the form of letters written by the dead woman two days before her death that proved she was despondent over her mother's recent past. On this evidence, I say that Mrs. Harry Benson killed herself and was not killed by her husband. <clears throat> Harry Benson had no reason to kill her, no desire to kill her. But most important of all, Harry Benson could not possibly have killed his wife because at the time of her death in the city, he was 330 miles away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you cannot convict an innocent man. I beg of you to weigh the facts and bring in a verdict of not guilt. For Harry Benson has committed no crime, and you cannot find it in your heart to find him guilty of something. Order! Order in the court. Have you, the jury, reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. How do you find the defendant? We find the defendant not guilty. <laughs> Tell him I'm busy, Roland. I told him you were busy, but he says he's going to see you anyhow. He's the late Myrna Benson's brother. 
Well, tell him I couldn't see him if it was the early bird sister. Look, you, I, I won't be put off. I got something to say, and I'm going to say it. Take the fair they can't see you, Mr. Jellison. He's seeing me now. Now, come on, you can't. Oh, can never mind, me. Rollins. What is it, Jellison? I don't have much time. I won't need much time. Okay, Rollins. I can handle this. Yes, sir. All right, Jellison. What do you want to talk to me about? You know very well what I want to talk to you about. The whole police department smells. I know that Harry Benson killed my sister. I know she didn't kill herself. I want something done about it. Now, look, Jellison. I think that Harry Benson killed your sister. I feel she didn't kill herself. But there's nothing I can do about it. You can send him to the chair for murder. I tried that. The DA tried that. The courts tried that. But the jury said he wasn't guilty. And that's your fault. If you had enough evidence against him, the jury would have convicted him. We had all the evidence we could find. And that was plenty. But it didn't add up to proof. Then find more evidence. You know he did it. Why can't you get more evidence and try him again? We can find more evidence. Maybe. But we can't bring him to trial again. With more evidence? Of course you can. Oh, no, Jellison. Once a man is tried and found innocent, he can never be tried for the same crime again. You mean he's free for good? That's the law, Jellison. There's nothing I can do about it. You mean there's nothing you will do? There's nothing I can do. Well, I can do something. In fact, I can do plenty. Now, be careful, Jellison. Careful? How careful have you been? Thanks to you, my sister's killer goes free. But he won't stay free. I'm going to make him pay for what he's done. Now, don't be a fool. Call me whatever you like. If the law won't punish Harry Benson, I'll take care of him myself. <laughs> Is that any way to treat a newspaper? I'm sorry, Mary. I'll pick it up. But every time I read about it, I get sore all over again. Reading about the Harry Benson case again? Yes, and it's... Oh, it's practically driving me crazy. Everybody in town knows Benson killed his wife, and yet the court lets him go scot-free. Yeah, I know. Can't anything be done about it? Not a thing. Something could be done Faraday in the DA's office would have done it. Come in. You Boston Blackie? Yes. I want to talk to you, and I want you to listen. Now, wait a minute. There isn't I time don't... to wait. I don't want the same slough off from you I got from the police. Something can be done about it. Something can be done about what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm John Jellison, Myrna Benson's brother. Oh. Uh, Miss Wesley, Miss Jellison. How, How do you do, Miss Jellison? I think I know what you want from me, Jellison, but there's nothing I can do. Benson can't be tried again? No, he can't. No matter what new evidence I might be able to uncover. Why is that, Blackie? For a very good reason, Mary. Our laws are made for the protection of the individual. The law says a man cannot be tried more than once for the same crime. More evidence will do absolutely no good. But you could do something. You could make him confess. So what? Even if he confessed, he couldn't be tried again. In the first place... I it... thought you'd come running up here, Jellison. Hello, Faraday. Now don't let this guy worry you, Blanky. He's coming with me. You mind your own business, Faraday. And while you're minding your own business, Inspector, mind uh, putting away that gun. It may take a gun to handle this guy, Blanky. He was just in my office threatening to... I know, threatening to kill Harry Benson for murdering his sister. And nobody would blame him if he did. He killed my sister, and I won't let him get away with it. I share your sentiments, Jellison. Ah, uh, you see... can share his sentiments, Blanky. But do anything about it, and I'll see to it that you also share his cell. <laughs> about to call you. I won't be down today. All right, sir, but there are several contracts Mrs. Benson was dickering for just before his death that came through today. Uh, do you want to accept them? Do they look all right? Oh, yes, sir. In fact, they're most profitable. <laughs> Wire acceptance, and I'll be down tomorrow to sign them. Thank you very much, Mr. Benson. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Luncheon is served, Mr. Benson. Oh, thank you, Williams. I'll be right in. Excuse me, sir. Hmm? I haven't had an opportunity to tell you before this, sir. Uh, but the servants are most happy. Happy? About what? That, uh, well, sir, that you were not made to suffer for something you didn't do. Oh, thank you, William. You were so worried all during the trial. There wasn't anything to worry about, William. The law protects an innocent man. We are all so grateful that it does, sir. I'll get it, Williams. Now, you may serve lunch and I'll be right in. Yes, sir. Right away. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benson. Uh, this is Jones at the office again. Oh, yes, Jones. Mr. Ward at the exchange just teletyped us that your Antigo stock is rising, sir. So is the Delton and Whitry. I'm doing all right, eh? Excellently, sir. He advises buying more if you can. Tell Ward I leave that up to him. I don't have all the money in the world, but at the rate I'm going, I'll have it someday. Well, you're a very lucky man, Mr. Benson. Lucky? I don't think so, Joe. 
smart is the word. And you don't know how smart. <laughs> How much longer are you going to stand there at the window? I don't know. Darling, you haven't said a word for 15 minutes. What's the matter? Mary, I'm going to do it. Do what? Help that fellow Jellison. Oh, you said yourself there was nothing that could be done. There is something, though. Something that'll bring him to trial again? No, nothing will ever do that. But I can give everybody some satisfaction if I can prove beyond a doubt that Benson is either guilty or not guilty. Oh, then there is a doubt. Not in my mind, of it. But if I can dig for evidence, prove how Benson could be at Mountain Lodge and still be here in the city to kill his wife, maybe I can make Benson suffer. But if you can't do that? Maybe I can prove that Mrs. Benson did commit suicide. That would satisfy Jellison that Benson wasn't getting away with murder. Oh, Blackie, why? Why, darling? What will you really accomplish? Well, nothing, I guess, but I might as well try to help poor Jellison. I have nothing else to do. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, hello, Blinky, this is Faraday. Now, how's the inspecting business, Inspector? Uh, no jokes, Blinky. You remember Jimmy Bolton? Remember him? Every time I have a nightmare, I dream about him. Well, he's out. Looking for you, Blinky. He can't be. I gave you evidence to send him to jail for life three years ago. I know that. But three hours ago, he broke jail. And one of his jailmates said he busted out for just one reason. Well, what am I supposed... you. What am I supposed to do about it, Faraday? Call a cop? Now, look, wise guy. Jimmy Bolton went to prison for killing one of his best friends. So he won't think anything of killing one of his worst enemies. You! And now back to Boston Blackie. Harry Benson murders his wife. But he plans the murder so cleverly that when he is brought to trial, he is acquitted. And the law states that once a man is tried and acquitted, even evidence that later proves his guilt cannot be used against him. Blackie has decided to do what he can to help John Jellison, the dead woman's brother, when he hears from Faraday that Jimmy Bolton, a killer Blackie once sent to prison, has broken jail and is out to get his revenge. As we return to our story, Blackie and Mary are in Blackie's apartment, where Mary has just learned about Jimmy Bolton. You've got to do something. I'm going to, Mary. Well, what? See if I can't either prove Mrs. Benson killed herself or find some way to make Harry Benson suffer for killing her. Darling, I'm not talking about the Benson murder case. I mean, what are you going to do about Jimmy Bolton? He's dangerous. I know it. He's a little too old to be reformed. But forget it. Oh. Uh, let me see that map of Mountain Lodge country again, will you? All right. Here you are. But please, please do something about Jimmy Bolton. Look, look, call Shorty and see if he knows where Bolton is. If Shorty knows anything, he'll call me soon enough. Uh, Mary, look at this map. Yes. Here's Mountain Lodge, 330 miles from the city. Mrs. Benson was killed in her home on Tuesday at about noon. At that time, Benson was with four friends at Mountain Lodge. Blackie, darling, you know it's useless. A man can't kill a person who's 300 miles away. And even if you think he could, what good would it be? He won't be tried as you I know all that too well, but let's see if we can figure this thing out. It's a fact that Benson did kill his wife. Is it a fact when it can't be proved? I'll ignore that for a moment. Answer this. How did Benson kill his wife? I'll ignore that. I don't blame you. All right, let's drop the whole matter anyway and worry about Jimmy Bolton. We'll worry about Bolton later. Let's review the known facts of Benson's case. All right. All right. According to the evidence, Mrs. Benson was killed in her home on a Tuesday somewhere around noon. At that time, Benson was with friends at Mountain Lodge, 330 miles away. You know we've gone over this about 330 times, haven't you? Maybe this time is it. Now, let's keep going. All right. Benson was at Mountain Lodge for two days before his wife's death and for one day after. He came back to his house and found her dead. And called the police. Then the police arrested him for her murder, saying that he had a motive and it was his gun that killed him. Which he had and which it was. But Blackie. Benson was with four other men at Mountain Lodge all day, the day of the murder. He wasn't out of their sight for one minute. Oh, he was, Mary, several times, and for as much as an hour at a time. So what? How could he have left Mountain Lodge, come to the city, killed his wife, and gone back there all inside an hour? Now, that's a round trip of 660 miles. I have it, Mary. 
Whatever it is, it's impossible. Oh, no, not this. The answer is Mrs. Benson wasn't killed in her home, but somewhere within a few minutes' drive of Mountain Lodge. The police say she was killed in her home. It looked as if she'd been. Benson planned his murder very cleverly. He sent for his wife to join him at Mountain Lodge on Tuesday. He met her at the train, took her out into the country, and then killed her. And then brought her ba- body back to the city? Exactly. He killed her on Tuesday somewhere near Mountain Lodge, put her body in his car, then brought her to the city Wednesday, put her body in the house, called the police, and you know the rest of the story. Well, at least one way he could have killed her and still not be away from his friends at the lodge for more than an hour. It's the only way. Well, all right, then. Now that you've figured out how he could have done it, how are you going to use it against him? He can't be brought to trial again. No. But I can see to it that he doesn't profit by his wife's death. Well, worry about that later, will you? First, do something about Jimmy Bolton. Blackie's here, Miss Carlin. Susie, get me Charlie Kingston in Chicago, will you? Of course, sir. And Susie? Yes? If he isn't in Chicago, get him on the phone no matter where he is. I have to talk to him right away. <laughs> Happy Jones. What's the matter? Contracts coming in too fast? <laughs> it's about contracts, all right, but they're not coming in. They're being canceled. What? We've had 11 definite cancellations in the last hour. Our steadiest customers are withdrawing all their orders. What's the matter? I don't know. Well, uh, don't let them cancel. Well, there's no way to hold them to their contracts, sir. They've got cancellation clauses. All their orders are being stopped quite legally. Uh, well, don't do anything, Jones. I'll be right down. Yes, sir. Williams. 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 Five of them, and I haven't seen one of them for two hours. William! You were calling me, Mr. Benson? Yes. Tell Harry to get my car. I have to go down to the office. I'm sorry, sir, but the chauffeur is no longer with us. Huh? All right, then tell Jack to bring my car around. Jack is no longer here either, Mr. Benson. Uh, okay, then you get it. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm leaving too. In fact, sir, all the servants are gone. You all left me? Why? Shall we say, to keep more profitable employment, sir? That's not the reason, and you know it. Williams, you can't leave me. You, you... I'm very sorry, sir. But goodbye, sir. Williams, you can't open. Uh, hello. Mr. Benson, this is Jones at the office again. Now, what is it, Jones? Mr. Ward of the exchange just phoned. Your stocks are dropping, sir. I thought Ward said they were rising. Well, they were, sir. And right after you brought, they kept on rising. But about an hour ago, everybody began selling. Your stocks are down seven points and still dropping. What does Ward think I ought to do? Fine, Mr. Benson. We'll check the drop. But I can't. I haven't the money. But I can't sell those stocks for all I have. At the rate they're dropping, sir, in another two hours, they won't be worth having. I won't take you up to your apartment, Mary. I want to run down to see Faraday a moment. Well, all right, but do be careful, will you, Blackie? I'm worried about Jimmy Bolton. Well, what should we be careful about? Bolton will never get near me. Our murderous friend Benson is probably so bewildered by now, he doesn't know he's alive. Blackie, get inside the door, quick. What's the matter? That big car coming down the street. Look out, dog. Yeah? Inspector Faraday. What do you want in my office, Miss Wesley? Blackie's not here. Inspector, Jimmy Bolton just shot us Blackie. Where's Blackie? Where are they taking him? He wasn't here. Oh. Well, uh, well, that's too bad. Inspector, listen, I'm not Blackie. You don't have to depend on me. Blackie's in danger, and I know you're worried. I'm very worried, Miss Wesley. Bolton's a cold-blooded murderer. He's out to shoot Blackie or anybody who gets in his way. Well, can't you do something? Well, I've got half the force looking for Bolton now. Where is Blackie? In his apartment. He promised to stay there under Bolton's car, but he won't. I know he won't. Okay, look. You call Blackie every few minutes if you have to, Miss Wesley. Anything to keep him there. I'll get Bolton. How? I don't know how, but I'll get him, Miss Wesley. I'll get him. I'm sure you will, Inspector, but please get him before he gets black. Yes, Mary, I'm right here, and I'm going to stay here. You stand right there in your apartment house, and not even go out into the hall? Well, what is this? There's only one person after me, not a whole army. Sorry, I don't care. Now, you stay right where you are. I promised I would, didn't I? Well, there's someone at the door, Mary. Oh. Probably the boy with some magazines I ordered. I'll call you back. All right. Bye. Bye. Come in. Well, this is a surprise. Unless you take the photograph, make you look like someone else. You're Harry Benson. I'm Harry Benson. You're Harry Benson. 
This is not much all right about you. Blackie, I just found out something about you I don't like. Oh, you've come here to flatter me, have you? Is there just one thing you don't like about me? Two things. You and your friend, Charlie Kingston. Oh, I see. You, uh, you've heard from Charlie. Indirectly. Great guy, Charlie Kingston. <laughs> He's the only man I know who can do things indirectly and get direct results. I'm not here to talk about the results. I'm here to talk about you. Because you put Kingston up to what he did. I said, and it all traces back to you. What are you trying to do to me, Blackie? Crying, don't you? It ruined me. I don't think you can prove that any more than the police could prove you murdered your wife. The law says I'm an innocent man, yet you seem to persecute me in your own way. Blackie, what do you expect to gain? This. This. What's this getting you? It's not getting me, but it's getting you. Hey, you think I'll crack? You think you can hound me with troubles, ruin my business, turn my employees, and then my friends against me? Make me feel alone, suspected, and hunted? You want me to be afraid? You want me to go out of my mind? You're not afraid, me. Well, I won't. Nothing you can do to me can make any difference. Making a difference already, isn't it? You came in here rather calmly. Now you're getting excited. All right. All right, maybe I do have something to be excited about, but so have you. You leave me alone, do you hear? I'll get even with you. Better start now, then. You have a lot of catching up to do. I'll catch up. Don't expect me to wait for you. I have other things to mind due to you before I'm finished. And maybe one of them is to beat you to a pulp. You so much as I beat like you. I know, I know. You're full of John. Put it away, then. You don't commit murders that can be traced to you. I'm not going to kill you, don't worry. Do I look like the worrying type? I think. Look, you can't gain anything by what you've done to me or what you plan on doing. Even if I admit I killed my wife, nobody can do anything to me. You don't have to admit you killed her, Benson. I know you didn't. You don't know any such thing. And I know how you killed her. She killed herself. Yes, in a way she did, by coming up to the mountain lodge to meet you. She, she didn't come to the lodge. No. She didn't get there. You met her, explain. Took her to a secluded spot, shot her, then brought her body to the city the next day. You don't know that. What's the matter, Benson? You think your plan is so clever it can possibly occur to someone else? Oh, you are, Blackie. I'm leaving so soon. I was just beginning to enjoy this. Yes, I'm leaving. Better put that gun away before you walk out in the hall, my friend. You might frighten someone. Oh, no. I'll keep my gun ready until I'm out of here. Now, you try to stop me. There he is, Rollins. Nice shooting, Joe. Let's know what hit him. Hey, Rollins, what's the idea? You're supposed to be a cop. Hello, Blackie. Faraday's orders were to shoot the guy on sight this way. Well, you certainly done a job on him. You said. You don't miss. I think you guys have made a rather serious mistake that I asked the phone. Yeah, turn him over, Joe. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> Hello? Frankie, this is Faraday. Uh, hello, Inspector. Hello, Sorry, a couple Frankie. of your boys. Your, uh, but... your worries about Jimmy Bolton are over. We just picked him up on the west side. So, uh, relax. Thanks, Faraday. You're a good boy. Now, uh, but... do me a favor, Mr. Blanky. I've got your building full of cops with orders to shoot Bolton on sight. Now, will you go out in the hall and tell those two men of mine to round up the others and come on home? Sure, Faraday. Do you mind doing me a favor? Ah, uh, what? Uh, reserve a slab in the morgue. Your men just shot and killed Harry Benson. It was an accident, Faraday, and accident will happen. But this time, the accident happened to the right guy. Blackie, I'd have died if I thought Mr. Benson was going to come up here. Well, he came up here, and he died. Well, what made him do it? Dyer, come up here. Come up here. <laughs> well... You remember when I called Charlie Kingston? Yes. Charlie and his friends ruined Benson's business and ran his stocks into the ground in one day. How did they do that? Kingston put pressure on Benson's clients and told all his friends who had the same stocks Benson held to sell as fast as they could. I see. And on top of that, Kingston hired all Benson's servants for a week's party with a $500 bonus if they'd leave saying they weren't coming back. Oh, I see why Benson turned it to you then. He found out Charlie was causing him all that trouble and he knew you'd put him up there. That's right. And I'm very glad that when the cops shot at him, they didn't miss him, because I guarantee that now that he's dead, nobody else will miss him either. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.